And I'd like to ask any Democrat senator here that would like to speak to Rashida Tlaib. She still has a tweet up condemning Israel for a hospital attack. And uh, stop. It's not a stop. No. It's a stop. fair question, Senator Graham. We are here together not to talk about the problems at home, which are many. It's a fair I've question, Senator. I've got my Senator. own view of what to say. You're Please, not going to screw this up. I'm not trying to screw it Get up. Get this guy out of here. Now, let I me live tell here. you. I'm an Israeli. I want an answer to the question, please. I'm an American. And I am too. And I believe in free speech. I don't believe what the squad has to say Thank at you. all. But I came here with Democrats and Republicans to let everybody in the world know, don't judge every Democrat by the squad and don't judge every Republican by some of the things you hear. דבר אחד שאנחנו לא נעשה, לא תהיה הפסקת אש בלי החזרת חטופינו, שיוציאו את זה בכלל מהלקסיקון, מה אנחנו אומרים את זה גם לאויבינו וגם לידידינו, ואנחנו פשוט נמשיך עד שננצח אותם, אין לנו אלטרנטיבה. Continuo a pensare alla grave situazione in Palestina e in Israele, dove tantissime persone hanno perso la vita. Vi prego di fermarvi in nome di Dio. Cessate il fuoco. Auspico che si percorrano tutte le vie perché si eviti assolutamente 
un allargamento del conflitto. Si possano soccorrere i feriti e gli aiuti arrivino alla popolazione di Gaza, dove la situazione umanitaria è gravissima. Si liberano subito gli ostaggi. Tra di loro ci sono anche tanti bambini che tornino alle loro famiglie. Sì, pensiamo ai bambini, a tutti i bambini coinvolti in questa guerra, come anche in Ucraina e in altri conflitti. Così si sta uccidendo il loro futuro. Preghiamo perché si abbia la forza di dire basta. إن تصريح ما يسمى وزير التراث في الحكومة الصهيونية بأن إلقاء قنبلة نووية على قطاع غزة هو أحد الحلول لم يأتي من فراغ وإنما هو تعبير عن مستوى الانحطاط والنازية والسادية التي تدور في أروقة وعقل حكومة الكيان المحتل القائم على القتل والإبادة الجماعية والتعامل مع الآخر على أنهم حيوانات بشكل البشر كما ورد على لسان وزير حرب الاحتلال بني غانس في الأيام الأولى لهذا العدوان الوحشي على شعبنا في قطاع غزة kurtarılması Gazze'de tüm dünyanın gözleri önünde işlenen katliamların durdurulması da bizim boynumuzun borcudur. Filistin topraklarının dört bir yanında çocukları, anneleri, masumları öldüren katillerin, mazlumların malını çalan hırsızların yakasından yapışmak bizim insani vazifemizdir. Bu ahlaksız, vicdansız, alçakça katliamı yapanları destekleyenlerin yüzlerine gördüğümüzün her yerde suçlarını aykırmak da tarihe karşı sorumluluğumuzun bir gereğidir. McCarthy had said there were communists everywhere taking over America. Look at us 50 years later. Big government runs everything. They tell you what size your light bulb can be, uh, what type of toilet you can have, where your kids can, you know, just everything's controlled now. But it's communism by the banks. They take your money and then give it to themselves through the government. But as soon as Joseph McCarthy, and if you understand this, you understand everything. As soon as Joseph McCarthy realized and went public and said, I've discovered the communist conspiracy is run by the Pentagon. <clears throat> and they said, excuse me, you're saying that the commies in Russia have infiltrated the Pentagon. And he said, no. I mean, go read his speeches. He said, no, the Pentagon is the communist. There were several meetings with Roosevelt and Churchill that they had at the end of World War II after Roosevelt died, meetings with uh, Stalin and, of course, uh, Harry Truman. And, th and those were public meetings you know, that they announced each time months after it had happened. 
And he talks about in there how the Soviets, who'd been our ally during World War II, the West said, how do we set up a police state domestically? How do you set up a police state? You need an enemy. And they said, well, uh, we'll, we'll demonize you. You demonize us. We'll cover your atrocities. You'll cover ours. And then we'll have proxy wars with each other so we don't ever have to nuke each other. And we'll take half of a country and you take the other half. You take half of Korea, we take the other half. Half of Vietnam, the other half. We take half of Europe, which they divided Germany in half, of course, and took over uh, half of Eastern Europe. We'll divide it all in half with you. And that would, at first was even public. And it was all staged, every stinking bit of it. Oh, it's not staged when you're in a foxhole, you know, fighting communist. But it's staged when you're in the upper command and you're not allowed to bomb actual factories in the north. I mean, if you want to defeat the New World Order, folks, you've got to understand their master strategic planning and why they're so hard to beat. And stop thinking black versus white, Christian versus Muslim, you know, two-dimensional game of checkers. This is chess, but at multi-level. It's like playing 10 chess games at once, folks, with millions of different factors coming in. Hello, what's up there? First of all, f before I get too involved here, here, ale, Christmas ale, made in the Great Lakes with you know, Christmas ale with spices and honey. Very good beer. Never had this beer before. I got it on sale at Myers today. Cheerio. Ah, but more on a serious note here. You know, that clip in the beginning there where Lizzie Graham was kicking out a reporter who was trying to ask a legitimate question, basically. But then again, you know, we have neocons like Lizzie Graham who's up in arms for war. They're in warmonger mode like never before right now. Ever since Russia invaded Ukraine last year, last February, they're just extremely in warmonger mode right now. Big time. And they're not realizing or even probably even care what kind of war what kind of worms they're opening up here, you know? They're not. Now Mike Adams makes great videos. I'm gonna put a link at the end of this video. Please watch it. He makes some good points. One point he made, you know, those who cause for those who cause for war basically will die in a war. Here's the thing. We have Iran right now pressuring the United States like never before. They're demanding the United States pressure Israel to do a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. And Iran basically said if they don't do that, they'll hit the United States like never before. So what does that tell you? And Netanyahu basically said there will be no ceasefire. We have, you know, Israeli Air Force bombing a refugee camp in the Gaza Strip, killing several civilians, a lot of them including children right now. I mean, it's a massacre, it's a massacre in the Gaza Strip like never, never before. We haven't seen this much death and destruction since World War II. This is no joke, folks. No joke at all right now. I believe this is pre-planned, premeditated right here of what they're doing right now, okay? It's got people in the States and all over the world up in arms right now, okay, on both sides right now, you know, using all these key gas, these key gaslit words, you know, anti-Semitic, Islamophobe, all this other nonsense they're throwing out there right now. Now, I'll say this for myself. I'm not pro-Israel or pro-Palestinian, basically, I'm not Israel side or Palestinian side. I'm just telling the truth how I see it. Okay? And uh, those of you who's calling for war, and this big time war in the Gaza Strip, well, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. And we'll be in a situation like we never had before in U.S. history. You know what I mean? We'll be attacked. It'll, it'll, make, it'll make like 9 11 seem nothing. May even see Pearl Harbor seem like nothing. Nothing was coming down the pike. Okay? Is a thing, like I always said, I'm expecting a major false flag incident, okay? I'm not getting too much, but this is a little history. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand was one of the key events that led to World War I. Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria, Herr, Herr, whatever, of the Austrian Hungarian throne, oh, heir 
that are permitted to Alshon Hager Throne and his wife, Sophia Duchess of Hollingburg, were assassinated on June 28, 1914 in Bosnia, Serbia. Well, right now, well, Bosnia is, is an independent country right now, but, but those days, it was, those days, World War I days, Bosnia was part of Serbia. Student, I'm not going to Gervio Principe, I'm his name, they were shot, they were shot at a close range while being driven through Sarajevo to provide cap, to provide a provisional capital of the bosnia Herzegovina, formally annexed by Austrian Hungary in 1908. So the assassination of the Archduke of the Austrian Hungarian Empire, you know, a monarch there, what led to World War One? That was the spark that led it, right there. After that, it was a domino effect, and next thing you know, Europe caught itself in a major war, World War One. And back then, they called it the Great War. After it was over, World War Two is a whole different story. But I'm not going to talk about World War Two about this. And you might ask, why did I bring this up? Because I'm afraid something like that is going to happen pretty soon. I don't know later this year or next year. Okay. I see maybe a key political figure get assassinated. That will spark this stuff. Even, will spark off even more. Okay, we will be in a full scale global war, World War Three, if you know what I'm saying. A major, very much a major false flag event that's coming down the pike, big time. You know, so you know, all this shit. Well, I believe is playing. They want this shit to happen. Okay, part of the Great Reset. Okay, we had the neat went to them. Something not say this, but I say we had the Zionist Christians and the Zionist Jewish, Zionist Jews, the Zionist Christians is making us all this happen. I believe high power Muslims is making this happen as well so, to create some kind of great holy war, basically. All righty, the Zionists believe the Zionist Jews believe. If we, make, if we make this happen, this great war, they'll get their Messiah. The Zionists, what I believe, the Zionist Christians think if we speed up Armageddon, basically, that we have the second come of Christ. The Muslims, they're a whole different breed right there, so I'm not, not sure what their point is. But you have to realize, Benjamin Netanyahu funded Hamas. The U.S. government funded Hamas, basically. And right now, we have our political leaders in D.C., on both sides of the aisle, he was, caught, he was up in arms for a war, and I have not heard any of them really calling for a ceasefire right now in the Gaza Strip. Not that I've heard. Correct me if I'm wrong. But here's the thing right here, okay? If this keeps going on, you know, something major, because you have the President Aragon of Turkey is threatening to jump into this as well, and we have U.S. military bases in, Tur in Turkey, American military bases American military bases are in Turkey right now. So I don't know how, I don't know how I was going to play up, but it's not going to be good at all. Okay. And in this war, will we be, will, will be hit in the U S and the United States. I'm not talking about no U S military base overseas. I may even talking about a U.S. embassy overseas somewhere. I'm talking about in the homeland. Okay. In the heart of America, we're going to be hit. And hit hard. Alrighty. And it's all part of the plan because they want to cancel the 2024 election because they see Trump winning no matter what they do. They know there's no stopping a Trump victory in 2024. They know that now. So they have to do something and they're going to get desperate because they cannot allow another Trump victory. And an article I read, he is supposed he might get 300 electoral college votes this go around. So, it's, so, you know, so they have to do something. They have to spend the election somehow in 2024. And they have a major event to do it. What by way to do it? They have a full-scale war. And before I shut this out, you know, the Mitchia Joe Biden right there, you know, pedo Joe, okay, or dictator Biden, is not really calling the shots. I believe it's Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, is calling the shots right now. Right now, I think he's the one who's running the damn country as, as we speak right now. And one more thing I want to point out. We have our Israeli officials right now wanting to nuke Gaza. They're calling for genocide in the Gaza Strip right now. 
So it's getting ugly. It's getting ugly real quick. It's going to get uglier. Okay. And like I said in the beginning, those who call in for war will die for war. War may seem pretty to these guys, see profitable to these guys, because to them, war is money. But in the end, they're going to see how ugly war is. And they're going to realize they're going to lose everything in this war. All right, everybody. Please check out Mike Adams. At the, okay? You made a lot of great points. Peace. Bye-bye. Most of those calling for war in the Middle East will be wiped out by that same war. This is what's fascinating and disturbing at the same time is that the, the people who are on board with war, like, yeah, kill them all, carpet bomb, wipe the floor, cut the grass, get rid of them. Those are the same people, by and large, who have no idea about financial preparedness or even other forms of preparedness, food, you know, iodine or whatever. They are encouraging a series of events to be unleashed that will come back and absolutely devastate their own finances. They will be wiped out. I interviewed Andy Sheckman uh, just a few hours before I recorded this. Andy Sheckman of Miles Franklin. And he's handled over $9 billion in gold and silver purchases over, I don't know, 30 plus years. And he helps people, you know, acquire gold and silver. Well, it's his assessment that what's coming because of the escalation from the Middle East and probably a halting of uh, or an energy embargo against the United States and Israel and any other country that helps Israel, by the way, we're looking at bank failures that will lead to bail-ins. And he told me specifically that it's the bank bail-ins that are going to freak people out and cause the next wave of financial panic. He said right now, he's actually a little bit surprised that there's really not much you know, panic and not a lot of people are, they don't have bank failures on their radar right now. But the moment the first bank bail-in takes place, and remember, that's when the bank asserts ownership over customer deposits and says, your money is now our money. You, you know, you've become a creditor to the bank. And we, we might pay you over time some small percentage, you know, but you can't just come in and take your money out. It's ours now. It's our money. Like the minute that happens, all bets are off. And then the bank runs will be attempted everywhere else. But that's going to lead just closures and bank bail ins. So one bank bail in will spread to other bank bail ins. And at the end of the day, you know where this is going. The government's going to have to print, well, the Fed, trillions of dollars in more currency in order to bail out whatever banks it chooses to bail out. And that list will be selective. Janet Yellen has already assured us of this point that not all the banks will be bailed out. And even when they say they're bailing them out, it doesn't mean the customers are going to get all their money back. It just means the banks are going to be protected so that they're not entirely insolvent. And it's only going to be selected banks that will be allowed to survive. And guess which banks those will be? Those are going to be the banks that have agreed to cooperate with the central bank digital currencies, or the CBDCs that are coming. Government digital money that will be, the whole program will be laundered through a series of globalist-oriented banks, such as JP Morgan, Chase, you know, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, whatever. It's, it's, it's just a few banks. It's probably going to be fewer than a dozen banks remaining in America by the time this is all said and done. And most people will lose almost everything. And yet, as I said, opening this up, these same people are cheering for war. Go get them. When they don't realize that that war is going to devastate their own financial position. And they will be left penniless. And all the money printing necessary to bail out the banks, this is going to make, in 2008, the subprime mortgage collapse look like a walk in the park. This is going to cause so much, well, devaluation of the dollar combined with inflation of the prices of consumer goods that you know, food prices could double virtually overnight. Fuel prices could double overnight. We're talking about a, a 
tidal wave of new currency flooded into the system beyond even what happened during COVID. And during COVID, it was off the rails insane. The, the, the national money supply was increased some, by something like 40% in 18 months, something like that. That's, that's a 40% increase in the money supply of all the dollars that exist in the world increased overnight like that. That's going to double because of how much money they have to print, not just to bail out the banks, but also they have to bail out a lot of the derivatives that have made the banks insolvent. You know, it's not just holding treasuries that have lost half their value. It's also holding these derivatives, which sometimes are leveraged, you know, 200 to one, if not more. The level of bailouts required will break the Western financial system. It will break. And then the only assets that will really matter at that point, I mean, the things that you, you need to hold in order to have value are going to be, well, obvious things, gold and silver, ammunition, garden seeds, land, obviously. Some real estate, you know, homes will always have some value, although the current value may be really overblown. But gold and silver, and maybe certain types of crypto. I personally, I happen to think that uh, Monero, the it's the number one uh, privacy crypto, can withstand a lot of this, and maybe actually, you know, hold value much better than fiat currencies because because the Monero ledger is honest and and decentralized. Like nobody can fudge the numbers, and there's going to be a a mad dash towards safety or safe assets that can't be easily manipulated. You know, when I interviewed Robert Kiyosaki, it was the same thing. He said, I won't invest in anything that governments can print. Basically, what Kiyosaki was saying is that assets where parties can cheat on them are not going to be worth anything. And obviously, governments can cheat on currency by just printing more currency. And that's exactly what they're going to do. And that's why the dollars are going to go to zero. And anybody left holding dollars when this music stops is going to be wiped out, destroyed financially. Bank accounts, savings, checking accounts, many stocks, most, most debt instruments, including treasuries and so on. It's all going toward zero. It may not hit exactly zero, but it's going to be close enough that it doesn't matter. And finally, remember, this is all going to be ignited by Israel attacking Gaza with the full ground force, which the United States is backing. And most of the rest of the world is saying, this is insane. They want a ceasefire. They want diplomacy. The U.S. and Israel want war. Well, and they're probably going to get it. And it's going to be absolutely devastating to the people of Israel and the United States. In fact, Israel will be lucky to survive this as a nation. And in the United States, even though it, it may not destroy the whole country, it will destroy the Western financial system. So keep those things in mind, folks, because that's exactly where this is headed, and it's not pretty. You can stay informed, read my articles at naturalnews.com, and you can hear my podcast at brighteon.com. Take care. Thank you for supporting us here at Brighteon.com. And one way you can also help support us is by shopping at healthrangerstore.com. And we've got some really exciting new products to share with you here today. Uh, I've got samples on my desk, and there's three things to mention here. The one on the left, it's called Hydrate Elementals. It's a combination of coconut water powder, certified organic, and Aquaman, which is a mineral supplement that has some very special, unique properties. Uh, this is about mineral replenishment and hydration. You can learn more about it at our website, healthrangerstore.com. It's very popular, especially with people who do any kind of fitness or workouts. We've also got here on the right side, a new trail mix product. This has coconut chips and nuts and, uh, you know, almonds and walnuts plus raisins. It's a very delicious trail mix, and it's not just a bunch of junk and a bunch of crumbs and byproducts of nut processing. I mean, these. this is a high-end trail mix, all certified organic, all lab tested, including for glyphosate and heavy metals and more. Uh, check it out at healthrangerstore.com. You're really going to enjoy this. 
And then finally, in the middle there, we have something brand new that I'm super excited about. It's a pine needle nasal spray. And that's in the green little small vials there with the, uh, the nasal spray aerosolized tip on the top. I personally harvested the pine needles for this in Texas. They're loblolly pine trees because the pine needles are extremely high in shikimic acid. And then I oversaw the extraction of the shikimic acid and then the mixing of that into this formula. You can read the ingredients on our website. But this product is not being sold. It's only available for free as a bonus giveaway during our Black Friday sale event that's coming up. And watch for that. Join our email list. You'll get the announcements. You, you get you know, all the links to participate in that. The only way that you can get that nasal spray with the shikimic acid using pine needles that I personally harvested in Texas is through the Black Friday event at healthrangerstore.com. And during that event, by the way, it's our biggest sale of the year. We're going to have the most products on discount, all kinds of amazing discounts, including on third-party products that are drop shipped and so on. It's wait till you see the catalog and the landing page for that. It's going to be quite impressive, but you definitely want to take advantage of that and get some of this pine needle nasal spray and look up shikimic acid too, because that's the molecule that is used to make uh, Tamiflu, by the way. Very interesting fact. Uh, also, one more thing on our website, healthrangerstore.com, we now have available certified organic heavy cream powder. We've got it in pouches and number 10 cans. And this heavy cream powder is, of course, you know, laboratory verified. It's tested for you know, heavy metals and glyphosate and, and microbiology as well. And there's no junk in here. It's literally powdered heavy cream. It's not just maltodextrin and, and you know, a bunch of garbage with cream flavor. None, none of that stuff. This is the real deal. That's why it's not cheap, by the way. But if you want to add to your food storage pantry, heavy cream, this goes a long way. And we also have, by the way, we have now organic white cheddar cheese powder, also in number 10 cans and pouches as well. So you can make your own macaroni and cheese pretty easily by combining this cheese powder with the organic cream powder and some salt and pepper and some onion powder and get yourself some, you know, organic macaroni and it's all done. You have a really nice meal. So take advantage of this at healthrangerstore.com and that will also help support this platform. We thank you for your support and I'm committed to bringing you more interviews, more content, more analysis each and every day that helps you understand what's happening in our world, helps you navigate it, and also importantly, helps you survive it. Thank you for supporting us here at Brighteon.com and healthrangerstore.com. Take care. A global reset is coming, and that's why I've recorded a new nine hour audiobook. It's called The Global Reset Survival Guide. You can download it for free by subscribing to the naturalnews.com email newsletter, which is also free. I'll describe how the monetary system fails. I also cover emergency medicine and first aid and what to buy to help you avoid infections. So download this guide. It's free. It's my gift to you simply because I want like-minded people to survive.